an introduction to poetry in the post-colonial space. Let's simplify this. Colonialism and its impact. Colonialism is when one country takes control over another, often far away, making it a colony. This started in Europe after the Middle Ages, when Europeans started exploring and claiming other parts of the world as their own. They used their advancements in science and technology for navigation and trade. The main goal was to dominate the local people of these places, introducing European ways of living, laws, languages, and religions, often treating the local cultures as inferior and even forcing them into slavery. Post-colonialism After World War II, around 1945, countries began to fight for and gain independence from their colonizers, especially gaining momentum in the 1970s. This period is known as the post-colonial era. Orientalism is a concept explained by Edward Said. It's about how the West views and studies the East, Asia, Middle East, often in a biased way that supports colonial domination. Decolonization means getting rid of colonial influence, especially in politics, culture, and language. It's about rebuilding a country's identity, traditions, and governance without the colonizer's control. Language and decolonization Language was a big part of colonial control. Colonizers often imposed their language, diminishing the value of local languages and cultures. After independence, countries struggled with whether to keep the colonizer's language or revive their own. For example, in India, English was introduced for education and administration, replacing many local languages and traditions. Post-colonial India India faced a lot of challenges after the British left. There was a clash between embracing globalization and preserving local culture, nativism. English education, introduced by the British, had a lasting impact on India. It changed Indian society in many ways, both good and bad. There was a debate about what should be the official language of India. English remained important for communication between different language groups within the country. Nativism is about prioritizing local culture and values over foreign influences. It's a response to the threat of losing one's cultural identity to external influences. Post-colonial literature Post-colonial literature explores themes of identity, resistance, and the impact of colonialism. It rejects the colonizer's views and values. In India, this literature often reflects the country's struggle with its colonial past and the search for a new identity. It includes works in English by Indian authors who address these themes. Notable post-colonial poets include Nisim Ezekiel, Kamla Das, and A.K. Ramanujan, who write about their experiences and views on India's culture, society, and the lingering effects of colonialism. In simple terms, post-colonialism is about the struggles and changes countries face after gaining independence from their colonizers, including how they reclaim their own culture, language, and identity. Post-colonial spaces This passage discusses how poetry in post-colonial spaces, regions previously colonized and now independent, addresses complex identities and struggles resulting from colonial legacies. It starts by highlighting how colonialism disrupted national identities and languages, forcing colonized peoples to adopt the colonizer's language. This situation created a unique challenge for post-colonial poets, who had to navigate between their native cultural identities and the imposed foreign cultural and linguistic influences. The text then introduces the work of three significant post-colonial poets, Pablo Neruda from Chile, Darak Walcott from St. Lucia, and David Malouf from Australia, showcasing how their poetry reflects on their cultural and national identities amidst the influences of colonialism and globalization. Pablo Neruda is celebrated for seeking a distinct Latin American identity separate from Spain. Despite facing challenges, including political exile, Neruda's poetry spans love, nature, and political struggle, earning him a Nobel Prize. His work is a testament to negotiating identity in a colonized space.
Darak Walcott explores the cultural division and personal isolation stemming from his mixed heritage and the linguistic diversity of the Caribbean. His Nobel Prize winning work navigates between his European cultural orientation and the black folk cultures of his native Caribbean, using language as a tool to assert Caribbean identity. David Malouf, of Lebanese and English descent, reflects his background and experiences in Queensland, Australia, in his poetry and novels. His work often critiques post colonial Australia, exploring themes of memory, consciousness, and the clash between colonial and native cultures. In simple terms, this passage tells us how poets from formerly colonized countries use their work to discuss their mixed identities and cultural heritage. They write about the struggle of living between two worlds, their own cultures and the ones imposed on them by colonizers, using poetry to explore and assert their unique identities and resist the lingering effects of colonialism. Conclusion the summary talks about how a fair democracy should let everyone take part in politics equally. For this to happen, the political environment needs to be welcoming. However, the cultural control by colonial powers in the past left people in former colonies struggling to reconnect with their own traditions and heritage that were lost or suppressed. As these societies moved beyond colonial rule, their languages evolved to better reflect their unique identities and experiences. Poetry during the post-colonial period, after the end of colonial rule, played a crucial role in this transformation. It provided a space for people to express themselves and helped highlight the collective suffering and challenges they faced due to colonialism. Essentially, post-colonial poetry has been significant in showcasing and addressing the deep impacts of colonial rule on the societies and cultures of formerly colonized people.